Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to episode 43 of Extreme EvoCast, an all-purpose Pokemon podcast where we talk about news, trivia, and everything related to Pokemon. Welcome to the uh, first episode of EvoCast after the um, the release of the Crown Tundra. I'm very, very excited to talk about it today. Um, judging by the title of the episode, you will probably know that you'll probably see that this is only part one of uh, of a you know alleged multi-part uh, sort of review or discussion about uh, the Crown Tundra, and that's because I haven't finished it yet. Um, I have been very very busy um, doing schoolwork and stuff, uh, but I managed to uh, stream the Crown Tundra as soon as it came out, like at like literally like the second it came out i just like i hit the go now button or like the live now button and started streaming it uh and i streamed until like three o'clock in the morning so i ended up streaming for i ended up playing it for like six hours and i got through i would say like 90 percent of it if not like a little bit less um so i haven't i haven't gotten through a few other things and because of that i don't want to just like talk about everything today i want to talk about a few things that i have done uh, leave a few things that I had that I have done and are ready to talk about uh, for next episode just because um, you know I want to sort of balance them out like I said because it would be like 90% this episode and 10% the next episode so I'm going to sort of split it up a little bit so this episode I might not talk about uh, as much as I would like to but that's okay because I still have to finish the the DLC anyway so I haven't had a chance to uh, you know so so I I wanted to give myself a chance to sort of talk about it um when I finish it. But even then, of course, uh, it goes without saying that this episode of Extreme EvoCast is going to contain spoilers for the, uh, the Crown Tundra. I am, uh, you know, I'm not going to hold anything back. I'm going to do, I'm going to do all sorts of spoilers, talk about all the new stuff, uh, that happened that was released in this new episode. So if you, um, don't, you know, if you don't want to get spoiled, if you haven't had a chance to play the Crown Tundra yet, I would recommend, uh, only listening to the, you know, beginning half of this episode, uh, and then coming back later when you when you finish it to hear my opinions. Also, uh, one more thing before I get started. It is extremely hot today. And normally what I do is I, you know, I put a comforter over myself uh, and like over my microphone and my and my monitor to sort of, you know, muffle to dampen the sound a little bit. So it sounds a little bit more, it sounds less roomy in here because like I discussed a few episodes ago, my room in college is extremely spacious. It's like super tall you know, there's no soundproofing at all whatsoever. So it sounds a little bit echoey in here. And you might be able to hear that just from, you know, from sort of listening, um, that it sounds a little bit more echoey than usual. Like I said, normally I put a comforter over myself and because it's so hot today, uh, I'm not going to do that because I know that I'm just going to, I'm going to be sweating throughout this entire episode of EvoCast. And that's not something that I want to do. I need to get like a sheet or something. I don't have like a sheet. I mean, the one that I have is on my bed, but like, I'm not going to take it off every time I want to record EvoCast. So um, <laughs> I, I'll have to get like a thin blanket or like something that will dampen the sound, but it won't, you know, drench me in sweat during the, the, during my recording of my podcasts. Anyway, let's get on with the news for today. Uh, today is actually surprisingly, I mean, you know, it, it's it's debatable um, how, how surprising it is that there's actually not that much to talk about uh, when it comes to, to, to things today. I mean, like, yes, we're talking about the Crown Tundra, but like, you know, obviously other than that, um, the, you know, like the news, the other news is sort of overshadowed by the Crown Tundra in general, and this we don't really have that much to talk about. Um, first, however, there is the, uh, okay, a little bit of a weird thing. The Pokemon bus tour. Uh, it says the on Cerebi, it says the Pokemon company international have put out the first episode of a five part YouTube series, Pokemon bus tour, explore Galar, Galar, why did I say it like that? Galar aimed at showing the areas of the UK that inspire the Galar region, hoping new players get into Pokemon. Alongside this is a digital Galar Expedition Guide, and it's available at the official site. I actually didn't see that. Wow. So there's like a, there's like a, like literally, uh, there's like actually like a, like a, um, a, like places that you can go. It's like, like what they're based on. That's really cool. Awesome. Like, like all of these areas are obviously based on actual areas of the, um, you know, of the, of the world. So uh, of, of the UK. So, you know, like the Pokemon dens are based on like the, 
those like weird hexagonal rocks that uh sort of that you know that show up on shores like the wild area um you know modestoke stuff like that uh so if you want to do that and also i haven't actually watched the first episode of uh pokemon bus tour that actually sounds really interesting now that i now that i think about it i might actually watch it um and and keep y'all updated on on how it goes because that that actually sounds really interesting to me speaking of new things to watch i have insanely good news <laughs> the mad lads did it they are coming out with more episodes of pokemon twilight wings twilight wings is coming back after like you know like literally they're doing it because people enjoyed it so much i like to think that i had a little bit of say and you know why people enjoyed it so much but i mean people like the you know the the sort of the response on the crown time on on crown tundra on uh, on twilight wings was insanely good it was insanely well received like i think that like everybody really really enjoyed it so they're doing it again uh there's a new episode coming out on november 5th that's all we really know about it but other than that i mean yeah more twilight wings more stuff to watch i am so very excited you can expect me to talk about all of this stuff uh in the coming weeks as it gets released Next, there are new Pokemon official sir, uh, shirts released by Original Stitch. There's five new designs. Let's take a look at what those designs are, if I can, if I can look at them. Pokemon products, OriginalStitch.com. Um, oh, you can sort of just like customize. You can customize things. Okay, what are the what are the designs? Let's see. Pokemon shirts. Oh, I see. Okay. Let me make like a button up shirt. <laughs> I'm not going to actually buy any of this stuff, but I'm curious to see what, uh, what they got. This is taking a lot longer than I thought it would take to load. Come on, you. All right, there we go. So we have five designs. There is one that looks like a Hitmonlee. Is it? What, uh... Okay, options. Uh, they, okay, there's hit my, oh my god, they have like, they have embroider, like, embroidered shirts of every single one of the original 151 Pokemon. That's crazy. Like, it's literally like, you know, there's one of Ivysaur, Charmeleon, every single, every single one of the original 151 Pokemon. That's insane. I didn't know it was that. It said five styles. I guess it just meant, you know, let's see. If there's any, if there, oh yeah, okay. So there's just, so there's just uh, little ones, sort of. Uh, it, there's no, it's nothing, nothing else other than that. But that's pretty darn cool. So you can go to, like I said, originalstitch.com and check out those new embroidered shirts. They're very, very cute. I like them a lot. Um, oh, never mind. Okay, hold on. It's, it's. I think that that was the old stuff. It says uh, they come in five, five different designs. Feature. Espeon and Umbreon, Larvitar and Tyranitar, Snorlax, Ditto, or Ghastly and Gengar. They make they can be custom made and mixed with other Pokemon fabrics, and they are only available for purchase until November thirteenth. Hmm, interesting. All right, well I didn't see those on the page, but maybe I'm just not looking hard enough. I'm not really gonna you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna care too much about um <laughs> about you know whether finding these things. I'm sure that if you really wanted to look for it, you could find it. So. All right, you can get a, uh, uh, like last week, you can get a uh, Unova hat cap Pikachu into uh, into Pokemon Sword and Shield uh, with the code Pika Best Wish. All one word, all of the eyes are ones. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just like a continuation of the, the things they were doing last, like last month, uh, where you could get all the way up until Sinnoh, I believe, of all of the, the, the hat Pikachus with, um, with codes. So you can get a, uh, you can get Unova now available until November 30th. Next on the list is just a few more um, very minor things about uh, some of the some of the off games. Um, Pokemon Cafe Mix Beware is coming. <laughs> That's it. New Pokemon Cafe Mix uh, to Beware. And finally, ending it off with uh, Pokemon Go, there was, of course... Uh, this is Review Unity Day, where I take a look at the last, uh, the, the most recent communities that happened, and there was one on the 10th uh, for Charmander, like we originally 
uh, like we originally talked about a few episodes ago. Um, I got to catch a few Charmanders. I didn't get a shiny one, unfortunately. I'm pretty sure it's like the only one of the original starters that I need, which sucks. I was really hoping that I would get one, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, just because I didn't really get to play for that long. But, um, you know, even then, I hope the people who, um, you know, took part in the community day got their shiny charmanders uh, there's I've, I've seen people with like hundreds of shiny charmanders so i don't th i think that now i would be surprised if they ever released shiny charmander in the pokemon go again because people people have had like four chances to get shiny charmander ah okay hold on i was i was i was mistaken there's also uh the kalos pikachu hat that you can get with the code kalos pika <laughs> with the i being a one and the, the O in Kalos being a zero. I assume we'll get the Sun and Moon one soon. If not, it's already happened and I just like completely missed it. I don't think so. Oh, you can. Wow. I like, I have not been paying attention at all. Yeah. And it, it like, it just happened um, a few days ago. So I didn't see it. Yeah. The seventh and the eight different Cap Pikachu events is now live. You can get Alola Cap with Ultra Pika with the I being a one. Let me guess. Is there is there sun and moon? Am I that blind? No. Okay. So the sun. The, sorry. The sword and shield one has not come out yet. So um, at first I thought there was only Unova, and it's actually every one of them except for uh, sword and shield, and they can all be redeemed until November thirtieth. So if you haven't had a chance to get your uh, your ash hat or your yeah your ash hat Pikachu's, then go do that. Finally, uh, there is a Halloween update coming to Pokemon Go. Uh, it says Niantic have announced. Niantic have announced the new event in Pokemon Go, the Halloween event. It starts on October 24th, so it's actually live. It's going on uh, now and runs until November 4th. During this event, ghost-type Pokemon will appear in greater numbers in the wild and includes two times transfer candy and two times catch candy. Gengar and Sableye will be wearing costumes. The costumes are based on the official t uh, Halloween merchandise of 2018, with Gengar in a Mega Bonnet and Curse-style outfit and Sableye with a Litwick hat. Gengar will, be found, Gengar will be found in raids, and, and Sableye will be found in the wild. Uh, there's also a new uh, special research, as well as some new outfits. And speaking of those new outfits, uh, the, you, the very small little update came to Pokemon Go very recently. Um, you can get masks. <laughs> you know, the, you know the, the masks in, uh, in Pokemon Go. So if you, if you want to, uh, you know, protect yourself from Corona in Pokemon Go... Now you can. All right. Well, that concludes the new segment for today. Let's move on to Random Pokemon of the Week, everybody's favorite segment. We talk about a random Pokemon every episode uh, before we continue on to the main topic of today. Today's Pokemon is number 274. Can you guess what it is? Well, here it comes. It's Nuzleaf. <laughs> uh, very, you know... It's a Pokemon. Uh, another middle evolution. We're getting a lot of middle evolutions recently. I know last week's was more Pico, but like, the, you know, you know, Silcoon, Cascoon, Nuzleaf. Pretty sure the other, like one of them a few days ago or a few episodes ago was a middle evolution as well. Um, so Nuzleaf is a grass slash dark Pokemon introduced in Generation 3. It evolves in, from Dot at level 14 and evolves into Shiftry when exposed to Relief Stone. Uh, Nuzleaf is the Wily Pokemon. It has Chlorophyll or Early Bird or Pickpocket as its hidden ability. Gender ratio is 50-50. It is 3 foot 3 or 1 meter exactly. Uh, 61.7 pounds or 28 kilograms. Uh, and let's see, what is there to say about Nuzleaf? Nuzleaf, of course, uh, is the Pokemon that sort of started the whole... Nuzlocke, at least the name, uh, because someone decided to do a Nuzlocke of, I believe, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, uh, and they had a Nuzleaf or something? I can't remember the exact story behind it, but the reasoning behind the name being Nuzlocke is uh, because they had a Nuzleaf, or it came from the Pokemon Nuzleaf, um, and honestly, that is probably the only thing going for it. Also, one of the only Pokemon to have nipples, as far as I can re tell or remember, recall, based on Pokemon, don't think there's any other Pokemon out there that has canonical nipples. I, at least in its official art, it does. I don't know if it does in its, uh, in its sprites. Does it? Oh, it does have them in its sprites. I don't like that. I really dislike the fact that Nuzleaf has nipples. 
I don't know how to feel about that. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at its Pokedex entries, I suppose. We also have uh, Mystery Dungeon data to talk about. First, let's look at uh, Mystery Dun or, um, Pokedex entries. Nuzleaf live in densely overgrown forests. They occasionally venture out of the forest to scare people. This Pokemon dislikes having its long nose pinched. What? I guess it does have a big nose, huh? Uh, Pokemon pulls out the leaf on its head and makes a flute with it. The sound of Nestle's flute strikes fear and uncertainty into the hearts of people lost in a forest. A forest-dwelling Pokemon that is skilled at climbing trees. Its long and pointed nose is its weak point. It loses its power if the nose is gripped. Why? What is the point? Why would it even have that? They live in holes bored in large trees. The sound of Nuzleaf's grass foot fills listeners with dread. With dread, I can't talk today, apparently. Yeah, I mean, every single, pretty much every other uh, entry is just that. The original games had, like, a much more detailed description of Nuzleaf's Pokedex entry. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the Mystery Dungeon stuff. All right. From four to half, I'll strike fear into the foes with my grass flute. From half to quarter, be careful, my health is down about half. <laughs> okay, I like this. From one quarter or less, it says, I'm bushed. I can't blow my grass flute anymore. I'm bushed. What a name. What a what a word. What a phrase. I'm bushed. Uh, and on level up, it says, level up for me. I'm feeling good. So, wow. <laughs> it's got some... Uh, it's got some personality there, not something I expected for Nuzleaf. All right, let's let's look at uh, some trivia. Nuzleaf shares its category with Ibidimp. They're both known as the Wily Pokemon. Interesting. Despite several, despite several of Nuzleaf's Pokedex entries stating that Nuzleaf uses its leaf on its head as the flute, Nuzleaf has never been able to learn the move Grass Whistle. Wow, that's sad. So, what are these things based on? Uh, Nuzleaf appears to be based on a sprouting acorn and a Tengu, Japanese yokai that use their superna supernatural powers to protect forests, enjoy playing cruel tricks on people, having long noses. Ah, let me look at this. Let me look at a picture of this thing. Tengu. Uh, okay, they're just like, oh, okay, yeah, I mean, they're just like, oh, they have giant noses. Very interesting. Yeah, I mean, they're, d damn, uh, excuse my profanity. They got some big noses. I mean, like they look nothing like like Nuzleaf. I mean, Nuzleaf is obviously very stylized, and it's a it's it's an acorn. But I I can see the resemblance. That's cool. I know Shiftry is based on like an Oni, you know, or probably the same thing. Uh, yeah, it's based on the Tengu, so that makes sense. Tengu are often depicted with long noses, flowing white hair, and a single tooth wooden sandals called Gita, which is what. Uh, which is what Shiftry is. So, yeah, I mean, it just makes sense. It's like general progression from Nuzleaf to Shiftry. I really like Shiftry design. I know we're not talking about Shiftry today, but Nuzleaf sort of shares that category with uh, with uh, with Shiftry. And I like it. I, I think it's I think it's an interesting Pokemon. You know, it, it is what it is. I You know, I have a soft spot for Generation 3, so uh, I've always really enjoyed the C-Dot line, mostly because of Shiftry. Nuzleaf never really struck me as super interesting, but, you know, I can appreciate it. Sure. Uh, let's, let's look at base stats because we are definitely not going to be talking about its competitive viability because, spoiler alert, there is zero. Uh, it has an HP, HP and attack stat of 70, a defense and a special defense stat of 40, and a special attack and a six, uh, and a speed stat of 60. Sort of double across the board here. Um, yeah, let's see. It's shiny form. Shiny, ooh. Oh, man. I kind of like this a little bit, you know? Uh, so, for those of you who don't know it by heart and don't want to look it up, Nuzleaf's sort of darker brown uh, turns into a very much more darker brown, sort of like a, you know, uh, like a very... Um, I don't know how to explain it. It sort of gets a more like a like a like an oakier tone, you know. It gets it gets very it gets a little bit darker. It's sort of the same color, uh, it just gets a little bit more tinted and onto the darker side. But then the the beige, like the lighter brown part of it, turns like a bright orange. 
which honestly is really cool. Is Shiftry like that too? What is Shiftry Shiny? Oh, Shiftry Shiny is really nice. Shiftry Shiny. I know we're. Not, I know again. We're not talking about Shiftry today, and this will sort of be reserved for next time for when we eventually talk about Shiftry. But like, it's got some. Uh, it you know it's got some some co- the really warm color palette it's like they took shiftry's palette and they turned it into like a like a lo-fi you know sort of like 80s anime color palette it's very nice and sort of the same can be said about nesleaf i guess except for like the extremely bright orange but it almost makes it look like a superhero with like the mask it's got on being like bright orange and i actually really really like this shiny form um i'm gonna give it a little bit of a higher rating because of uh, what it evolves into i really enjoy shiftry shiny um so I'm going to say, eh, I'll say 7 out of 10. I think this is a pretty solid shiny form. It's, you know, it's different enough to strike my interest, but it's not wowing me enough to be any higher than a 7. All right, it is time to talk the Crown Tundra. I am over the moon excited to talk about this DLC, or at least, you know, start talking about this DLC. Um, so l- l- let me just get into it right with like my first thoughts. Do, uh, I guess I'll ask the question, do I think it's better than the Isle of Armor? Uh, I honestly don't know. I, I don't really know if you can compare them. I mean, they're two very, very different DLCs. Uh, I, they sort of encompass the same kind of, you know, um, the same the same sort of effect, you know, being a DLC with new Pokemon and areas and no new, you know, sort of story elements and things. Um, but, like... The Crown Tundra had a very different feel to it, uh, just over, you know, just because of the fact that it was, you know, in such a cold, icy place, probably had something to do with it, but, like, it it, it seemed a lot more heavy focused on the story, uh, and, like, the legendary Pokemon, um, like I said, spoiler alert, this is when I'm going to start talking about the, the actual game, so if you, if you haven't played the game yet and wanted to keep yourself unspoiled, uh, turn off the, turn off the podcast now. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next time. Uh, but if you're staying here, you don't mind the spoil or you've already played it. You probably know what I'm talking about. I mean, like, uh, obviously the main story focuses on Calyrex, uh, the, the legendary Pokemon that got teased to us right when the, when the crown tundra was, was, um, you know, released or, you know, teased, I guess, you know, the, the release for the crown tundra. And it was, like a lot of people just sort of made fun of it because it looked really funny. I and I I was kind of in the same boat. I always thought that it looked really really f- almost stupid, I would say. And I don't really think that think about that much about Pokémon. But I got to say, uh after the story and after the sort of experience that you go through with Calyrex, I really really like this Pokémon. I think it's a really really adorable Pokémon. Uh like here, I'll give you a little bit of background. Essentially, the story of this of this main uh, Crown Tundra, the, one of the biggest story elements is that you, it's, it's sort of separated into three smaller side stories uh, that's encompassed by this one big element where you are with Peony, the you know the new the new the new character, Rose's cousin brother. Who knows? We'll talk about him later. Um, on this expedition to find out more about the culture of this place and, you know, learn about the legendary Pokemon. And the biggest one, and probably the one that sort of encompasses the main story, is the arc for Calyrex. And you are t- you sort of meet Calyrex early on in the game, and you are tasked with getting his faith restored uh, to, the, to, the, to the people of the town that he sort of inhabits, um, and also getting his power back at doing the same sort of thing. And like they, I didn't expect this. I I didn't expect this at all. First of all, let me just say, but I also didn't expect it to be like, like they gave him a full blown character. You know, they gave him a, a voice, a character. They gave him expressions. They gave him a personality, and it actually made me very. It made me like it a lot more. Uh, though I will say, it did feel a little bit weird to catch eventually catch what is essentially a character a person you know, as far as i'm concerned because he uses calyrex uses peony's body to talk to you and sort of you know he can speak so like it's a little bit weird being just like oh hey you help me with this all right now catch me you know it's it's weird having a pokemon say that to you uh, which definitely has happened before either in the anime or in the games but like 
just felt weird to me <laughs> having like a main character just like eventually just be caught by this by this child uh but you know uh, ignoring that it was a, it was a beautiful story um it sort of followed Calyrex not having any faith in the town that he was in and you have to get it back I'm not going to go into the full details about you know what sort of what this what the story encompassed um you can play it for yourself or you can look up a walkthrough or you can watch me uh on my VODs on twitch.tv slash Lily Sion and also probably eventually on YouTube if you're listening to this far in the future and you want to watch my first impressions then that is most likely there um I will definitely you know sort of I, I'm definitely going to upload them at some point um, but, uh, you know, ignoring that, in more of a broader sense, uh, the Calyrex story was really nice. It also introduced a brand new Pokemon, or I guess two brand new Pokemon that we had never seen before. We had no possible way of knowing that this Pokemon was going to be a thing. Um, and that is Glastrier and Spectrier two new horse Pokemon that you actually get to choose. And, you know, they're not forms of each other. They're two completely different Pokemon. Um, they're essentially, there's, they're two sides of the same coin because they are essentially Calyrex's noble steed uh, that you have to lure using these like special carrots that he grows for you. Um, and you can choose whether or not you want it to be ice type or ghost type. Uh, Glastrier is the ice type, Spectrier is the ghost type. And they are essentially, as far as I can tell, the same Pokemon with the same ability. Just that, like, when uh, it's essentially Moxie, like, when you get a kill, when you when you faint a Pokemon, it raises your attack uh, for Glastrier, and for Spectrier, it raises your special attack. And as far as I can assume, Spectrier is essentially just the special attack version of Glastrier and vice versa. Um, I chose Glastrier, of course, because I love ice. You know I love ice, which is why I was so excited about this DLC in the first place. But, um, like I said, as far as I can tell, they're two sides of the same coin, sort of just up to the player's preference. There's no, I don't think there's any better one, um, genuinely. I think, I think that they're pretty much the same, just like they have different, they have a little bit of a different stats in terms of whether or not their attack or their special attack is better, and obviously their type. Um, and they look so cool i am so happy that we got a new ice type legendary pokemon and also a new ghost type legendary pokemon um in these in these two is sort of you know um and it, it's interesting because you can't as far as i can tell you can't actually separate them and what i mean is that at the end of the story of the calyrex story they Calyrex gets on top of Glastria or Spectria and becomes a Pokemon of its own. It's just Calyrex riding Glastria or Spectria. Uh, and they sort of merge types. Uh, they have both abilities, Unnerve and also, you know, whatever one, whatever one of the respective horse Pokemon that you're using. Um, and that's sort of combined into one ability called As One, which essentially gives you the effects of both abilities. Um, and it, they, they work together as one Pokemon. So they're essentially just one Pokemon. As far as the game coded you know, the game code is concerned, I, they're just one Pokemon. And as far as I can tell, there isn't actually a way to separate them. So I don't actually know if there's a way to use Calyrex or Glastria or Spectria just by themselves. I think you can only use the Calyrex riding on Glastria or Spectria, which is Psychic and either Ice and Ghost based on what you have, uh, based on what you chose. And I think, um... Yeah, the, the, those two types are already used in, you know, um, Galarian Mr. Mime for Ice and Psychic, and then obviously, like, uh, there's a few Psychic Ghosts. I think Lunala is Psychic Ghost um, for Calyrex riding on Spectria. So it's nothing new. It's nothing super exciting, but they're a very cool Pokemon. Um, honestly, very, very awesome, very, very intuitive, um, a very good sort of final bout to the story. Um, that, that it was introduced to us in the, in the Calyrex arc. And I'm very, very happy that we got to experience it. And I think that it's, that is the strong point of the Crown Tundra was the story. I think that that eventual leading up to helping Calyrex the entire time and then eventually getting to fight them as one, literally the name of the ability that they have together, um, and then catching them and using them on your journey, on the rest of your journey, doing the other two smaller story arcs is really, really fun. And it's actually a dynamic that I really enjoy 
Um, and I think is why I enjoy the Crown Tundra just a bit more than the Isle of Armor. I think that the story for the Isle of Armor was a little bit poorer than, um, than the story for Crown Tundra. Uh, not that I didn't like the Isle of Armor, but, uh, you know, also just judging by my personal preference, I think I definitely enjoy the Crown Tundra more than the Isle of Armor. Moving on. Um, obviously, there's more to the Crown Tundra than just the story. Uh, you know, and also there's two other story elements that, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to talk about, or I'm not going to talk about today. Uh, there is the Galarian birds, you know, Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, and there's also the Reggie stuff. You know, the Reggie Rock, Reggie Ice, Reggie Steel, Reggie Alecki, and Reggie Drago, and I suppose Reggie Gigas also. Um, I have not, I, okay, so I've done the birds. I, I caught the birds. I know all about the birds. I know how they work and stuff. Um, but I don't want to talk about it today just because I want to sort of keep that, uh, I want to sort of keep that time allotted for next time. Uh, when I do my, my second part of the review of the Crown Tundra, which will be more focused on the Reggie arc and the, uh, Galarian Birds arc, and anything that I might forget in this episode, which is why I also just wanted to give myself two parts. Um, but, uh, let's talk about the characters. So, there's a few, there's only, there's not that many characters in this, uh, in this, in this sort of, uh, game. Certainly not as much as the, as the, the base game, certainly, or also the Isle of Armor. I think that there's only, like, two or three really big sort of, uh, characters, and that is, Calyrex, of course. Calyrex is, I think, can be said as his, his own standalone character, but we already talked about him. And then Peony and Peonia, his daughter. Um, and Peony is uh, interesting, to say the least. Uh, he's a really fun character. He was a really, really uh, good personality to hang around with. He got a little bit bothersome at the end, but that might have just been me being tired. Um, but, like... You know, he uh, he's very eccentric. And, and of course, what everyone is sort of asking themselves now is, is Peony related to Rose? And I obviously we don't know. I don't think we know for sure. But come on, he looks so similar to Rose. They have flower names. Even peonies are even also described as the real life flower. They are described as roses without their thorns. And Peony can be described as pretty much exactly that. He is, he looks like Rose. He doesn't really act like Rose, but, you know, he looks a lot like Rose, And but his, his personality is way different. He's much more eccentric, much more funny, much dumber, I think, in general. Uh, he's like, you know, he's so focused on being a good dad for his daughter, going on these legendary expeditions, and overall just a fantastic character um, to sort of hang around with for the for the entirety of the of the Crown Tundra, I think. Um, Sonya was also there for a little bit of it, doing some research, uh, but we will get into what her deal is next episode. Um, Peony, I think, is, like, the biggest character in this, in this whole arc, or in this whole DLC. He's very, he's, he's very prevalent, maybe a little bit too much for my taste, uh, but, you know, some people really enjoy him. I really enjoyed him, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, he, he was, a, he was, he was fun. He was a good, like I said, a good character to sort of hang around with, um, and overall, just a, a pretty good character. And then there's also Peonia, his daughter, who sort of is like the catalyst for starting this entire arc in the first place, where he, Peony, Peony wants to sort of have this daughter-father expedition through the Crown Tundra, learning about the legendaries and stuff. But Peonia, or Nia as he calls her, does not want to do that. She just wants to do the Dynamax adventure. She wants to have a good time. She wants to just do her own thing. So she's like, hey, why don't you take over for me and do it with him to make him happy? And that's pretty much how the entire story starts. Uh, Peonia just doesn't want to do it. And you, we sort of have a little bit of look into, into Peonia's whole deal in the very beginning. And then she pretty much never shows up after that. Um, you do a Dynamax adventure to try to find her. And then as soon as you do, she's like, oh, go on this adventure with my dad. And then she never shows up again. She only is in the Dynamax adventure thing, um, which is a little bit upsetting to me. I really, I think she's cute and I think she's a really good character design. And I sort of wish that I did a little bit more with her, but you know, uh, no skin off my back, not really a huge deal, she was a good character for what it was, uh, same with Peony, and yeah, I mean, pretty strong, 
I, you know, I found myself laughing, laughing my butt off at sort of Peony's dialogue and Peony's interaction with most of the characters, especially Calyrex, because, you know, Calyrex sort of takes over his body most of the, most of the, um, most of the, of the, the game, of the DLC. So it's like, you know, he's sort of there the whole time and, you know, he's, he's funny. He, he was a good laugh, uh, most of the time. Anyway, uh, other than the characters and the story, there really isn't that much uh, to talk about left. I suppose the last uh, big story structure that I the sort of the last big uh, point that I want to make um, for this Crown Tundra, you know, discussion is the Dynamax Adventures. We can definitely talk about the Dynamax Adventures. I got my fill. Um, you know, in the amount of time I did it, I did it like at least four or five times and it's fun. It actually, I sort of talked a little bit bad about it last episode and like, but genuinely, I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's, it's becoming a a method for getting shiny legendary Pokemon. I think the odds can be like as low as one in 100, which is insane, like for legendary Pokemon. And I guess that makes sense because of, or for all of the Pokemon you find in the Dynamax dens. Um, and it's like, that's crazy. That, that's, that's insane. That is so many, uh, that's such a high shiny chance. Um, but I guess it makes sense because you can't see them until the very end and you have to do them like at least, uh, you know, you have to spend at least like 20 minutes, maybe a little bit less on them every time. So it's a long process, but you're, you're looking to get at least like, uh, you know, up to four shinies, uh, one in 100 chance, um, per, per expedition that you do, you know, um, or at least one, you know, every one in 100 chance of getting a shiny. And one of those might be one of the legendaries you can get. And it seems like you can get pretty much every legendary that doesn't appear, uh, in the game or in the DLC at some point. Uh, there's a few other legendary Pokemon that appear like, you know, the Reggie's, the birds, stuff like that, that sort of don't, or not the, you know, the Galarian birds, stuff like that, uh, that sort of don't, that appear naturally, um, in the world of the, of the crown tundra sort of, uh, in their own bubble. Uh, but it seems like you can get pretty much any other, uh, legendary Pokemon from the, from the Dynamax adventures. And it's pretty fun. It sort of just takes like the max raid and separates it into four separate Pokemon. And you have, you know, you have to use rental Pokemon. You can sort of switch them out as you go. You can get berries on the, along the way. You can get, you can change them out along the way. You can buy items to hold along the way. It's a pretty intuitive process and it's actually a lot of fun. I am, I had, you know, I didn't get to do that much because it was late and I wanted to sort of finish the story as, as fast as I could to experience it all. But Uh, I found myself genuinely really enjoying doing the Dynamax adventures, and I don't think that it would necessarily be a non-enjoyable shiny hunting method. You know, like a 1 in 100 chance for with four Pokemon every like 15, 10, 15, 20 minutes, that sounds really nice to me. And I might actually shiny hunt that way to get some to get some legendaries. So yeah, Dynamax Adventures, pretty cool, pretty fun. Uh, I like them a lot. I think they're a good addition. Uh, Maybe, you know, I don't think they're maybe as fun as I I expected them to be, uh, even though I did talk a little bit down on them. But, you know, they're a good time. I think they'll be more used for shiny hunting than anything, uh, which, of course, as a shiny hunter myself, I don't find any problem with. And finally, I guess uh, I'm definitely going to do like a big conclusion at the end of the next episode, sort of just like what, you know, what I feel about the entirety of the Crown Tundra in general after I go over all of it. Um, What can I say for now about how I feel about the Crown Tundra? Beautiful. Gorgeous. I love the icy aesthetic. You know me. I love ice types. I love ice things. I love snow. Uh, And the, the, the visuals of the Crown Tundra are beautiful. It was a really, really fun place to explore see all of the uh all of the you know the the landmarks the interesting areas the frozen seas all that sort of stuff very very cool um i i think honestly i think i actually maybe enjoyed the isle of armor scenery a little bit more just because it was a little bit more diverse um but for what it was i think that the the crown tundra sort of le- uh, the, the the visuals of it you know the, the they added like new trees all the pine trees are really cool new caves new mountains uh, you know you sort of go up that massive mountain at the end of the of the story of the Calyrex story um, as well as some other pretty diverse areas but 
Um, and like the main big central area in the middle, the giant's bed, um, beautiful places, beautiful landmarks to see, and overall, a very, very nice place to explore. Overall, though, so far, wonderful DLC, wonderful story, wonderful characters, and I'm very, very excited to sort of, you know, finish up my thoughts next time. Before we end for the day, of course, we have to talk about uh, our last segment for the day, everybody's favorite segment, where we talk about a random move every episode, number 444, (laughs) Uh, Stone Edge. Stone Edge is a damage-dealing rock-type move introduced in Generation 4. Uh, it was TM-71 from Generation 4 to Generation 7, and it is TR-75 in Generation 8. In Pokemon Su- Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, it can be upgraded to the special Z move Splintered Storm Shards by Lycan Rock holding Lycanium Z. Uh, it's a physical move. It is rock-type, like I said. PP of 5. 100 power and an 80% accuracy. Of course, Stone Age is, is very uh, noted, you know, noted for missing quite a lot because of its 80% accuracy. So uh, all Stone Age really does is dealing damage and has an increased critical hit ratio. That's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, you know, there's not really much other than that. Some of the other, you know, uh, like Pokedex entries is the user stabs the foe with a sharpened stone. It has a high critical hit ratio. That's pretty much the same for every single uh, entry. Let's see if there's any trivia about this move. There is not. That's pretty much it. It's a pretty basic move for what it's worth, uh, but it's a it's a staple. It's a very good move. Uh, you see it a lot in competitive Pokemon. Very risk, high risk, high reward uh, move for rock types and just other Pokemon in general. All right, and with that, uh, I think that's gonna do it for me today. Uh, apologies for the the shorter episode. Uh, Like I said, we will have plenty of time next time to finish up my thoughts about the Crown Tundra, but for now, that's all I can really do. Uh, I hope you had a wonderful time listening, hope you have a great day, and I will catch you in the next one. Catch you later. Bye!